Now from a ranch in Lubbock, Texas, is Texas Senator Ted Cruz. Senator Cruz, uh, I think the people want to know, what are you doing in a ranch in Lubbock, Texas? And I saw the back and forth with Stephen King, but please explain. <laughs> well, Eric, it's great to be with you. I'm on day three of an ag tour. I've been crisscrossing the state of Texas, meeting with farmers and ranchers. We, we started down in South Texas. We started down in Harlingen and, and Brownsville. Then we went up to Corpus Christi. Then we went all the way up to the Panhandle, Amarillo. And, and now we're in Lubbock. I'm here at the Patchkey Farm where, where they, they raise cattle, they grow cotton. And, and, and here really just listening to farmers and ranchers all across the great state of Texas. I got to tell you, it's always hard to be a farmer and rancher, but, but it's especially hard right now. Uh, with the Biden administration, we've got inflation that is hammering farmers and ranchers. The cost of everything is going up, whether it's the cost of seed or the cost of fertilizer or the cost of equipment or, or, or the cost of diesel. And, and, and it's, it is tough to be a farmer and rancher, but a big part of my job is to have the backs of every farmer and rancher in Texas, because I got to tell you, the farmers and ranchers, they represent the common sense values that make Texas the state we are. They make Texas, Texas. Isn't it amazing, Senator, that those those farmers behind you, I can't see if they win, but those gentlemen behind you that I do see, they're the backbone of America, the farmers, the Amen. ranchers, the truckers. The truckers, and those are the ones that the liberal left, the, the Democrats, the Biden administration, the AOCs are targeting. They're the ones who take the brunt of, as yep. you point out, when fuel prices go up, seed prices go up, fertilizer prices have skyrocketed double and plus. These people, the ranchers, the truckers, the people who are the breadbasket of America, the backbone, suffer the most. Well, and, and here on the ranch, among other things, they, they raise steers to show and compete. And I got to say, as we were seeing some of the steers they raise, a it, it, uh, couple of them produced something that really reminded me of Congress, because there's an awful lot of what, what those steers were producing in Congress every day. <laughs> and they do. And, and Senator, you know, one of, the, one of the things I saw going on was a little back and forth between you and Stephen King. And it was on, on the basis of the Biden has an alcohol czar. Now, they have a czar for everything. They want to make sure they, you know, yep. they have control over you from cradle to the grave. There's an alcohol czar who now says, what do you say, two beers per week is the recommended yep. allowance? Uh, Look, Eric, tell us about it, it. It is nuts. Number one, why the hell does Biden have an alcohol czar? We, we don't need czars in the United States. But number two, what is it with liberals that want to control every damn aspect of your life? Biden came in. One of the first things they wanted to do was ban gas stoves. New York State has now done that for new construction. They're trying to go after and regulate ceiling fans. I got to tell you, it's hot in Texas. We don't want to get rid of our ceiling fans. And now these idiots have come out and said, drink two beers a week. That's their guideline. Well, I got to tell you, if they want us to drink two beers a week, frankly, they can kiss my ass. No, okay. Um, Senator, I, uh, I brought a beer to drink with you. I'll drink this non-alcoholic beer with you because I'm not allowed to drink on camera, but I'll have, I'll have a sip in well, the meantime. Well, look, but, I, I got to say, so what, have you ever seen a brand do more damage to itself than Bud Light, which, which single-handedly seemed to destroy themselves. So I'm glad you're not drinking a Bud Light. Personally, I'm fond of Shiner Bach, which is a good uh, tech Texas brand. I've been to the Shiner Brewery in Shiner, Texas, and I recommend it. And I promise you, this is not alcohol-free beer down here. No, and by the way, the one I have uh, right after the show won't be alcohol-free either. And it may just be a, a, a vodka on the rocks as well. Senator, um, something a little serious. I got to turn it a little serious right here. Uh, yep. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell had another episode today. And th this is very odd, sir. The last time you were on our show, Senator McConnell had the same thing. It was a, it was a pause. Yeah. It was a moment, 35 seconds or so where he seemed to be trying to hold yeah. on to the podium and, and tell us, you, do you have any updates? Do you, do you know anything? Refresh us, help us out. So I, I don't know anything new beyond what, what has been aired on the press. Obviously, I, I saw the video of, of Mitch today and, it, and it's troubling. It's, it's, it's frightening. I also saw what happened earlier in D.C. And, and listen, age is, is something that, that, that all of us experience, and, and, and it's coming for all of us. But uh, I, I'm certainly praying for Mitch. I, I hope 
this health scare is okay, but, but, but that's frightening. I will tell you, uh, look, Mitch and I have disagreed on a lot of issues, but, but, but he is tough and ordering, and, and, and so I'm rooting for him to, to, to power through this. But, but it, it, it was a frightening video today. Yeah, it's scary. Um, it looks like, yeah, well, you yeah. want to speculate what it is, but he certainly, you know, and then, it, again, folks, it's, it goes both ways. I mean, if you call for Mitch to reconsider about, you know, continuing on in the Senate, don't you have the same issues with, with Joe Biden? I mean, I think the guy is at least as compromised as Mitch McConnell is. Senator? Well, and listen, Eric, I've served 11 years in the Senate now. Over the years, I've had a number of colleagues who, at the tail end of their life, um, end up having very, very serious health issues. And I, I've joked, if you, if you ever want to feel really young, come to the U.S. Senate, your colleagues are 106, and, you, and you'll feel like a spry chicken by comparison. But uh, that, that's the path we're all on, and, and, and there have been, I've seen both Republicans and Democrats uh, in the Senate at a stage where, where they have very significant cognitive decline. And, and it's one thing if you're a senator, you're one of 100, where... where the, the, the country can continue to do its business. It's another thing if you're the president of the United States. And, and I have to say, Joe Biden's deterioration is really dangerous. Look, every senator knows Joe Biden. Joe swore me in, in in 2012 when I was first elected to the Senate. He was vice president. The Joe Biden of today bears no resemblance uh, to the man of 12 years ago that swore me in the very first time to, to, to be a senator. And, and it's really dangerous because there's only one president, there's only one commander in chief, there's only one man with his finger on the button. And, and I really do fear what the enemies of America think, what, what Putin thinks, what she thinks, what the Ayatollah thinks. What, when they look at a president whose who's mental deterioration, he's clearly not up for, to the job anymore. You know, there's so many things going on, so many things that are dangerous, so many things that are existential threats to the United States, the cost of living, 3% uh, in inflation is 3% on top of 10% last year. So it's not 3% since he took over, it's 13 yep. or 14%. Yep. Uh, the border, the southern border, you're in the state of Texas, is they won't even, Senator, they won't do a damn thing about it. These invaders are coming in, we're putting them in sanctuary cities, they're raping and killing our children, and they won't Yep. even address yep. it. Senator, these are the things that are exi ex existential threats. But listen to Joe Biden right now saying the real threat to America. Listen. The intelligence community is determined, the U.S. intelligence community is determined that domestic terrorism rooted in white supremacy is the greatest terrorist threat we face in the homeland. Senator, white supremacy. Look. Listen, that's idiotic. And, and by the way, to be clear, white supremacy is evil and bigoted. And, and Joe Biden has some gall talking about it because Joe Biden 12 years ago gave the eulogy at the funeral of a, a former exalted cyclops of the KKK. So maybe she should shut up w w with his trying to make everything about pushing partisan politics. But, but let, let me be clear, any bigoted hatred is wrong. But you want to talk about threats to this country? Come to the southern border, which Joe Biden refuses to do. Come to the Rio Grande Valley. See what happens every single day. I was just on the southern border the day before yesterday. We've had over 7 million people cross illegally. When I was there several weeks ago in Brownsville, they were seeing 90 to 100 Chinese nationals every day, many of them young men of military age that are coming in. Now, now Eric, help me on this. I'm, I may not be an expert on geography, but I'm pretty sure China's not right to our south. And it says something no, about why, no. why Chinese military age males are coming through Mexico across our southern border because Joe Biden and the Democrats are letting them in. We're also seeing record numbers of people on the terror watch list. If you're a radical Islamic terrorist, if you're a jihadist, right now Joe Biden has an open invitation, come to our southern border and cross. And we're going to see a horrific attack, tragically, I fear, from these Biden open borders, and they don't care about solving it. We're already seeing murders, we're seeing rapes, we're seeing horrific crimes. We're also seeing the worst level of drug overdoses in our nation's history. Last year, more than 100,000 Americans died of drug overdoses. 70% of that came from Chinese fentanyl coming across our southern border. And to put that in perspective, that is nearly double 
the number of Americans who died in the Vietnam War. Just over 60,000 Americans died in Vietnam. Last year, over 100,000 Americans in one year died of drug overdoses. And it's Joe Biden and Kamala Harris's fault yeah. because they made political decisions to open the border. And they continue to make that decision today, tomorrow, yeah. and the next week. And we'll continue to see more and more body bags as a result. And, you know, Senator, unfortunately, that's something that you and I share. That's a tragedy that you and I share part of the fallout yep. of that wide open southern border with with drugs coming across. Senator, appreciate your time. Will you thank those those farmers behind you from us, from the balance, from Newsmax? Thank them very much. And, Senator, thank you for spending some time with us. Appreciate you. It, it's great to be with you. And I'll tell you, these farmers are great Americans. And Eric just said thank you to you all. Awesome. Thank you, Senator.